Now we've seen two clubs being released in the last few days that I feel are going to be the big players for the mass majority of golfers that are out there. If you're looking for new irons right now, then the possibility is you'll be looking at one of these two. And those clubs, of course, were from TaylorMade and Titleist. And uh, if you've been up to date on the channel, you've seen the full review of the T-Series lineup from Titleist. Super impressive in their own right across the board. But I'm focusing on one particular model and it's the T200. I think it's going to be a big one in terms of the mass sales. I think it's going to appeal to a lot of golfers. But today I'm going to put it in a head to head against, uh, well, TaylorMade's equivalent, if you like, in my opinion. That is, of course, their hugely popular P790. These irons have got a lot of similarities, but I want to find out what are the differences between the two, if any. Of course, this is a good old fashioned head to head and we need Trackman to give us some data to separate these two clubs. The kind of things we're going to be looking at is the kind of spin number these stronger lofted irons provide. What kind of launch and descent angle is going to be available from both of these clubs. And again, ball speeds is paramount. Forgiveness is key. Are we able to recognize a difference with off center hits well it's trackman that will give us all that kind of information and hopefully be able to separate these two clubs from a data factor but before we get to the data what about the way these two things look well this is probably the first area where there is a key difference because from a shelf appeal perspective they're very different. They've got, let's start with that P790, and P790 have got that sort of brushed satin look, uh, very minimal in its design and very popular. Uh, P790 has been a hugely popular selling iron from TaylorMade, and then switch over to the T200. It's very similar in terms of very full iron, no cavity back, but it's full of uh, a lot of shiny chrome as well. And I think that depending on what suits your eye, the shelf appeal is no difference, but what about when you turn these two things over, two seven irons in hand, how do they differ in terms of head profile? Well, before I actually turn them upside down and look at the top line from a width of sole, very little difference at all. And then when I do turn them at the address position, yet again, not a great deal to separate them, but it's very interesting in that the overall sort of face of the P790, and that's both sort of heel to toe and the height of the club just looks a little bit bulkier. Um, and I say a little bit, I'd say quite a bit, and it's interesting really because the satin colouring seems a little bit more uh, noticeable, if you like, visually. The, um, but without doubt, I said nothing, the more I look at them, the more it's apparent that the sort of overall profile, not necessarily the top line, because that's all I was concentrating on, whilst the thickness or the width of that top line might be similar, the overall profile of the T200 is that little bit more compact. I'd probably, from a profile perspective, from my position, be leaning towards that T200 has been a little bit more compact and more sort of suiting my eye. The problem I've got is from the masses and what you're looking for. Do you want a bit more bulk behind that ball to give you that extra confidence? That's a decision that you'd make. One final factor that you've got to bear in mind, or at least I would if I was buying a set of irons and shelling out this kind of money, I want them to sound and feel the way I want them to. Uh, and for people, it's not a big deal, but I could never play with a set of golf clubs that I just didn't like the sound of, I'm afraid. And that resonates to feel, none more so than in irons. Now, don't forget, these have both got forged faces on them, um, but they are, of course, hollow body construction. And for me, um, I'm not expecting them to sound like forged irons, fully forged irons, but I am hoping there's been improvement because um, that's one of the advancements that both have tried to achieve in this new setup. Right, let's go P790 first of all. I'm gonna hit another ball because I've got a little bit of mat with that and I'm hoping that you can pick up the audio. Like I said, it's always difficult in here because of the microphone being high on my chest, but let's see if we can hit a slightly cleaner ball. Right, that's it. That's a solid ball. And hopefully you got that sort of crisp strike they have improved massively, in my opinion, yet again, on sort of previous uh, iterations. So that's something that um, I think TaylorMade have done particularly well. I'm just going to switch out into a T200 and yet again, 
Um, if you've seen my original review, this is one of the areas, again, that I think has been a big improvement. Yeah, solid ball. And hopefully, you managed to pick that up. In my opinion, what you'll notice is that the T200 is a huge leap forward in terms of that category. Um, I think it's always one of the most difficult elements to get right is um, this forged face, but not a fully forged iron. Can you get them feeling the way you want? And I think they've both done a great job, Rabilene, towards what the T200s have done uh, for me. Super, super feel, and um, both, like I said, huge leaps forward. You're gonna to have to try them out, see what suits your ear, but hopefully you can perhaps have picked up just a little bit of difference between the two uh, from the audio in this video. Now, before we go any further, you can do my own little case study. I always like to know sort of where brands are at and uh, what are you considering in terms of these two? Brand new to market, big following on both these sets of irons, really, really popular, gonna to appeal to the masses. Have either of these irons got an appeal to you? And if so, which? And uh, all I want is a simple comment down below, T200 or P790. Today's video is brought to you in partnership with Hot Golf, the online golf mega store, bringing you the hottest deals in golf. And of course, the clubs featured in today's video. Find the link to the Hot Golf website in the description below and check out some incredible giveaways and offers. So the next question is, of course, performance, and uh, I have only got a seven iron in the T200s. So our head-to-head -head is good old uh, classic seven iron versus seven iron. Lofts are exactly the same. Different shafts, I've got a dynamic gold shaft in the, um, in the P790, and we've got an AMT shaft. They're both similar weight and both uh, same flex. So, there's not a huge amount of difference in them, but it's worth highlighting that there is a different shaft in these two irons. And of course, what I'll do is I'm going to hit a few balls with each, and then I'll record a full sort of range of data off camera. But I'll give you my first sort of feelings. The first feeling is, and I can tell you this from balls of it off camera, that was a P790 by the way, is it's extremely high launching. Um, sort of five iron and uh, seven iron and I've hit five iron for some other testing I'm doing and they've done an incredible job of getting this ball launching extremely high without a compromise on kind of ball speed spin and all those other kind of things and overall carry obviously. You'll keep seeing that the, my eye line is just not the ball flight you're expecting. I think every club manufacturer has done really well in recent years in improving and helping average golfers with this sort of launch angle. We've just had a conversation um, with a gentleman in here who's had some sort of classic Mizuno irons, classic as in terms of loft or traditional in terms of loft. And he just done some testing in here and recognized that stronger lofted clubs were launching the ball the same as his traditional lofted Mizunos and with no detriment to kind of spin and all those other kind of things. So I think the mindset has changed and we're sort of catching on to that now. But yeah, an extremely high ball flight um, that TaylorMade have got with that P790 lineup, which is all good for average golfers. Yeah, again, I mean, you know, Super ball flight, cut across that one a little bit. I'm sorry we've got no sort of ball tracking data for you to have a look at, and that's why I'm gonna keep this brief in terms of me hitting shots down the range. And we can have a look at my dispersion later. I'll hit one more with the T200. No, I won't hit one more, because I've just thinned that. But one thing is always prevalent, is that forgiveness is one thing, but if you thin a ball off the bottom, and you hit a bad shot, well, I'm afraid you're gonna to have to take some responsibility. Yeah, that's better. Super shot, super ball flight. Hopefully again, a few more shots hit with the camera on. You can start to notice the difference between the two in terms of sound. Forged face, neither of them are sounding like a, uh, a forged iron, so to speak. Slight bit of clickiness between the two. Um, I would say a slightly softer feel coming off that T200. Either way, do you know what? I'm just gonna keep this very brief, simple and straightforward. I'll hit more balls with both, not many more, because uh, we've got a fairly consistent, even just those two alone were very consistent indeed. 
let's finish off let's just go through the data what makes these two irons different if anything right that's it all we can do in terms of hitting golf balls i've only hit sort of what is it far or six with one seven with another but uh, we've pretty much got to a position where i'm happy with what we've got we sort of kept the swing speed club head speed relatively controlled again something i've been trying to do this year which is trying to replicate my swing that i would hit out on the golf course rather than the one that you hit on the range it was often a little bit quicker at times a little bit less control because you don't have to worry about it as much so anyway 70 look at this this is interesting so the first thing club head speed 76.6 with the 790 76.8 so we've got a good correlation in terms of how fast i was swinging a club that that's a good start. Let's go to the carry distances. I'll put each set of numbers side by side straight from the get-go and then maybe at the end I'll put the six or seven shots of each if you want to sort of pick the bones of it. Um, but essentially really interesting the average 152.4 carry with the tight list 150.7 with the 790 um, We've got a 109 ball speed versus a 110 ball speed, 85 peak height, 82 peak height, 18.3 launch on the T200, 19.4 on that of the 790, and a spin number which is pretty impressive on both as well, and a descent angle just a little bit um, of a steeper descent angle coming from the P790, and again that's relative to that launch angle. So the verdict really is this, they're pretty much inseparable, apart from the one thing I've commented on throughout and that is the fact that there's a shaft difference as well which I'm going to make just a little bit of a caveat before I say what I'm going to say and that is that the P790 definitely launched the ball visibly higher. Now it's one degree higher according to the stats in Trackman so that's well that's what it did but it was a noticeable difference for me in terms of ball flight in here. Um, I'm not really sure what's gone on with P790s, but like I said, both the 7 iron and the 5 iron that I tested in the original review are launching a ball really, really high. They've certainly optimised launch conditions, but it's not at a, uh, a loss of distance. Spin is banging where it should be, 5,500 revs for me, and that descent angle obviously makes a difference to stopping the ball. That said, the T200, I've got pretty much near as damn it in terms of the data but the one thing that the T200 has um, over the P790 in my opinion is just a little bit better in terms of that sound and the feel whilst the P790 is improved in terms of um, that hollow body construction uh, always a little bit clicky for me P790s it's improved but still if it was the one criticism I've got of the club that would be it where the T200s have got a real nice uh, feel and sound to them um, then you've got that Lux department which I said at the beginning not something I personally want to get involved in on, in terms of opinions they're both really look good looking clubs and I think you've got that you've got the price point which again I don't think I'll put it on screen for you now because this is filmed before T200s were released but in terms of at retail I don't think there's going to be a great deal of difference separating these two clubs they're both very much at the expensive end of the marketplace but I do feel like you're getting either way you're getting a good set of clubs but you're going to have to invest a bit of money uh, to get your hands on them so all the things you're going to choose is first of all Custom fit is imperative. You've got to find out what the differences are between the two of these clubs in your hand, especially when you're paying that kind of money. And then the decision you're going to make is going to be based on real personal preferences. Like I said, it's going to be the sound and feel. It's going to be the looks. It's going to be maybe some brand loyalty. Which way do you sway? You're a Titleist or you're a tailor-made fan. They're the kind of things that are going to change you. We've got to a situation right now with two clubs that have been released where they're almost perfect in terms of hitting every kind of parameter in terms of data so for me where where we went with driver a few years back where it was all optimized i feel with these two sets of irons um we've got to a situation where we're getting very very similar how are you going to improve those numbers i think it's going to be a difficult job to see any sort of advancements moving forward that's the problem so that's my opinion 
Titus T200s or P790s, they're going to be massive sellers for both brands. They hit the main market point, in my opinion, can appeal to a whole range of golfers throughout the sort of handicap spectrum. It's all down to you and your personal preferences, which way you go. Right, that's me done. As ever, thank you for watching. Uh, let me know your feedback. As soon as you've tried these two out, I'd love to you to come back to the video and give me your thoughts as well and uh, agree or disagree. But either way, just let me know in that comment section. Thanks as ever for watching. See you soon.